next thing we we'll look at is change in states. And the first type of change we we'll look at is what is called melting. And for melting to take place, there are certain conditions that must be met. Melting involves a change of states from which form to which form? Melting. From what? Solid to what? Liquid form. So when uh, particles are changed from the solid form to liquid form, from the phenomenon is not as but melting. For melting to take place, we wrote the condition. We said the force of vibration of solid particle must overcome the world's binding force. When solids are formed, solids are actually formed as what? Crystal ties. And this binding force, there's a binding force that keeps these particles together and makes it a solid. That is, there's an attraction between the molecules. Do you understand? The molecules are pulled tightly together by a force. And such, they form the solid structure. But when a sufficient amount of heat, sufficient amount of kinetic energy is supplied to a solid particle, what happens is that the particle begins to what? Lose its crystalline structure and it collapses. I would say for that to take place with the, the force of what? Vibration of the solid particles was overcome with what? Binding force. Once this happens, that solid structure will what? Collapse. And sometimes melting takes place what? Gradually. If you keep a block of ice in a particular environment for a while, maybe you place it on the table in a room, what is the average room temperature? 25 degrees Celsius. That's why you find out that if you have AC in your room and the temperature is conditioned to about 16 degrees, when you keep a block of ice there, it will take much longer for the ice to melt. Same thing if you put in an environment such as this environment, where the temperature is higher than room temperature. I think the temperature in this area is about is about 30, about 30 something degrees Celsius. So what happens is that ice will melt much faster in this environment than in a than in a colder environment. So that's the condition for melting to take place. The next thing we look at is what evaporation. Evaporation is a phenomenon we observe every day, and we said that particles in a liquid are what? Attracted in all direction inside the liquid. What do we mean by that? When we have a jar containing or a beaker containing water, you find out that these, the particles in the water, that the particles inside that jar, are actually attracted in all directions. They are attracted unidirectionally, meaning these particles are pulled upward, they are pulled sideways and they are put what? Downward by other particles. Force of, force of attraction between particles of the same molecules are known as, is known as what? Cohesion. So there is a strong cohesive force between the particles. And what does cohesive force do in chemistry? Cohesive force have to keep particles what? Together. So because of this force of attraction, it, it's been very difficult for the particles to escape and become gaseous. But the particles that are closer to the surface of the liquid, actually those particles have what? The particles you have at the surface of the liquid, they are only pulled downward and sideways. They are not pulled upward. Do you understand the idea? They don't undergo coercive force upward. It's only sideways and downward. So as these particles continue to move, they run at constant and they gain more kinetic energy. Some particles at the surface will gain some kinetic energy and gain some momentum and what escape this barrier that is created the liquid, the air to so liquid barrier and become what? Gaseous. This phenomenon is what we know as what? Evaporation. And it's different from boiling. This is what we know as what? Evaporation. The next thing we we'll look at is vapor pressure. Vapor pressure. Vapor pressure, pressure basically speaks about force per unit mass area. And the vapor pressure of a gaseous molecule is as a result of collision of the molecules with themselves. And the molecules collide with themselves, they produce a type of pressure that is known as what? Vapor pressure. The question is, when would the molecules have a higher vapor pressure? Is it when they are closely packed together? or when they are far apart. When they are closely packed, because 
the area will be what smaller. So the volume per area will be what smaller. So they run the higher people projects. What do you observe? They will collect more random. And that's why we can only say that the degree of randomness decreases as you progress from the gaseous molecule to the what solid molecule. Do you understand the degree of randomness? That's entropy. Entropy will does what? Decreases. The gaseous molecules have a higher entropy. They are more random than the liquid molecules. And the liquid molecules have more randomness than what? Solid molecules. Do you understand the basic idea? Now, when we talk about boiling, we're talking about the temperature at which when this vapor pressure continues to increase in a particular liquid, it gets to a point where the vapor pressure becomes saturated. It means that we can no longer condense this liquid further. It becomes saturated. It becomes saturated. And this vapor pressure is greatly observed also in liquid molecules, especially in liquid molecules. It becomes saturated. It gets to a point where by this liquid molecules gain enough pressure inside and it becomes saturated. I would say boiling is what is the temperature at which the saturated vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. When the saturated vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, what happens is that the particles of that liquid changes to what gas. But before this occur, between that saturated vapor pressure, where we have it for water is a hundred degrees Celsius, and steam, there is what is known as what latent heat of vaporization. Now, latent heat of vaporization basically is the extra energy that is gained. Do you understand? When you have a thermometer that is placed inside a liquid, and the liquid comes to the boiling point, which is what hundred degrees Celsius. When you keep supplying more heat to that liquid, you find out that the thermometer reading does not increase from 100, rather it remains at that um, mark, 100 degrees Celsius mark. And that point is what we know as latent heat of what vaporization, it gains a latent heat. The word latent means heating. So the temperature, the gain in energy, in kinetic energy becomes what? Unnoticed by the thermometer. And that's why we can say that steam is going to what? Burn the person's skin more cause more damage or more than what boiling water because steam has more kinetic energy in the sense. So that is where boiling takes place. At that temperature, the liquid particles that we said change to what gaseous particles. The next thing we look at is freezing and condensation. Condensation basically represents a condition where the kinetic energy of vapors is lost. A vapor loses kinetic energy, loses the amount of kinetic energy. Before we continue with this, I want to bring something to our notice under this heading uh, called evaporation. There's something that you should know under evaporation, and that is the simple fact that when some liquid molecules gain enough kinetic energy and escape, what happens to the average kinetic energy of the entire liquid? Does it increase or decrease? It decreases because some molecules have gained kinetic energy and they are all lost. So they, are, they escape with that kinetic energy. So how do you conserve kinetic energy? A closed system, the law of conservation of energy, it must be in a what? It's a closed system. So the law of conservation of matter, sorry. Because energy will still be lost. A closed system, so you keep... In a closed system, what happens as the molecules gain kinetic energy and they vaporize, evaporation takes place. What happens when you get to the surface, the water condensed back and still fall back as other droplets. So the average kinetic energy is maintained. That's why the food you keep will boil faster, will get done, will get prepared faster when the pot is what? So back to uh, the discussion of condensation. We said this is a process where vapor loses kinetic energy and enter into what? The liquid state. When the vapor loses their kinetic energy to a certain point, they are forced to go to the liquid state. Because they don't have enough kinetic energy to maintain the solid state. Yeah, and so they are forced to go to the liquid state. Why freezing of course when the temperature of liquid is lost, they lose their kinetic energy and they are forced to go to what? solid state in simple terms. 
Now, the you said um Basila whenever we are fine, we don't cover them in my car. Good question. What do you fry things with? The temperature, the for oil. If you cover oil, what will happen is that that particular oil, because the um, uh, temperature at which oil vaporizes is much lower than that of water. Have you observed when you have oil droplets inside, uh, when you have, uh, sorry, the temperature at which oil, oil vaporizes is much higher. Have you observed when you have water, when you put inside your oil? and you put it in the fire, what happens? It gains energy and the water splashes away. And because of the viscosity of the oil, if you cover the, the oil, the, it loses the viscosity. When you cover the oil and heat it, for it to gain enough momentum and vaporize like that. When you cover it, it loses the viscosity and it's full. And at that point, it's dangerous. It can explode. That's why many times it's not advisable to cover because we are trying something. Do you understand that? When you also cover it long enough, what happens is that you give it off too much to make it and lose its form. You understand? We have oil. Oil actually has a viscous form. Do you understand? The oil molecules is made up of, uh, we call it a class that we call fat and oil. So when you lose that viscosity, it becomes, how would I explain, it becomes the nature. So it doesn't have that, de that effectiveness as the normal oil. Do you understand? When you open the oil, what happens is that as this energy, some of that kind of energy is lost, so it maintains its form. Have you observed that? You observe that more with palm oil. With palm oil, you find out that. When you have palm oil in a place and you are, and you eat it for too long, it almost it loses its form and almost become you find that it's no longer like palm oil. They have a different thing. Same thing, if you allow granite oil to eat and you cover it, by then you open it to the absorbs its form. You understand? That's why we advise you to do this. Why? We are praying anything. Although we are not talking about food science. <laughs> Okay, the next thing we'll look at is, when we speak about kinetic theory of matter, it is based on certain assumptions. There are certain assumptions that are moving. Okay? And that assumption is for a kind of gas that is known as a perfect gas or an ideal gas. An ideal gas must meet these five criteria. The first is that gaseous particles move randomly, colliding with themselves and with the walls of what the container. So the particles must be moving in random motion and there is always collision. Collision. And it doesn't just state that these particles move in random motion, rather they move in a straight line in random motion. Yes, they are moving randomly but in a straight line. Like if, if you draw a line with a straight line, it's not zigzag, but random like this. Do you understand? So that kind of motion is what we call is random motion, but it's also translational. It also rotate. Okay. And the next assumption is that collision of gaseous molecules are what perfectly elastic. What we mean that by collision of the molecules are perfectly elastic. The idea simply means that when two molecules collide with themselves or with the walls of it, with themselves, one thing that happens is that the average kinetic energy is what constant. Now, it means that one molecule will have what, more kinetic energy and another molecule might have what, less kinetic energy when they collide. Do you understand the idea? One molecule will have more, the other will have what, less. But none of this kinetic energy is converted to heat energy. But that absorption for most gases is not true. When gases collide very randomly, a great amount of it is converted to what heat. So kinetic energy is lost in the form of what heat. But the assumption of kinetic theory of matter is that none of these molecules, none of this en kinetic energy is lost in the form of what heat. The next assumption is that the actual volume occupied by the gas is what negligible. And you know the gases have a small volume they occupy. 
So we are trying to say that for this uh, kinetic theory of matter to be valid for a particular gas, then the actual volume of the gas of the in that container should be negligible. And that is not the case for the real gases. We want to say that the coercive force between the gas molecules is what is negligible. That is force of attraction between the molecules of the gas and the cell. Cohesion is negligible for this ideal gas. And lastly, we have that the temperature of what the gas is a measure of its average kinetic energy. Sometimes the temperature of the gas can be due to its energy and the temperature of the gas condition. But for the assumption of kinetic theory of matter to be complete, then the temperature of the gas must be what a measure of its average kinetic energy. The next thing we are going to be looking at is the laws. Like, well, there are certain laws that govern an ideal gas. That's what we look at 